Okay, welcome to part 7 of my Death Stranding commentary series. Uh, episode 7 is basically where we're leaving the second act and potentially entering the third act, or we're at the beginning of the third act, take your pick. Um, but this sequence starts off with uh, an action scene, or this episode starts off with an action scene. And initially, I showed this sequence to my wife, and she was like, you know, it needs music, because all of this stuff didn't really have music in it. Um, so I grabbed some percussion beat from the original soundtrack, and then I reinserted it here. This is also the longest one of these hymn struggling sequences I've ever seen. Um, I put the game on easy difficulty, that way it took longer for them to knock him down. And I found that it made this work pretty well. Like, this goes on for so much longer than you would anticipate if you'd ever played the real game. And I think the cinematography came out nice, um, to be honest. But yeah, by episode 7, we are hitting on all cylinders, and I, I really like these... I really like the way this series ends, and I really like, uh... I really like this episode. This is actually one of the more stressful episodes of the series. Uh, this might be the, actually the most stressful episode of the series, but you'll know, you'll understand when we get to the end, but I felt like... After I watched this episode, after making it and working on it for hours, I felt like, not depressed, but I was like, oh god, like, what did I just make, you know? Because I was like, it just started off harsh, and then it's just harsh the whole time. But this is the tar pit sequence in the game. And there's actually multiple ways to deal with this. The first time I played this game, how I dealt with the sequence was... I got to this part with the whales, and then I let the whales eat me. And then when I came back to life, there was like a huge crater. And then I walked around the perimeter of the crater to get around the tar pits. And I didn't know you could do it this way. I didn't know you could just run across all these rooftops and actually get to the end and have a cutscene. But I was watching someone else's Death Stranding video where they did that, and I thought it looked better, basically. I'm like, oh, that's a lot more, like, that's less anticlimactic, <laughs> you know, the way they, this other guy did it. So, that's, that's how I learned that, oh, you can actually run across these buildings to get across the tar pit. And so I felt like, yeah, it's just better. Um, editing this sequence was pretty tricky to not have a HUD, because um, once again, HUD is popping up everywhere. Uh, HUD is heads up display, you know, your health, information, mini-maps, that type of stuff, heads-up display, so anytime that happened. I mean, I would have I would have always loved to have almost all these sequences just be one-shots, um, but the HUD forced me to edit. But, I mean, there were some pros and cons to that. Like, technically, it was a little, I mean, I guess everything was a little brisker and shorter and a little faster paced because I had to edit. That's Amelie in the background. So, I mean, you know, there are pros and cons to that, like, having to do this. Although I'll always wonder what would have happened had I had complete control of the HUD and could have just kept it off the entire time. So yeah, I think this sequence is nice. I think it's a good looking sequence, like the way this starts off. I feel like, yeah, it's pretty good. It's not bad. We're going to have a close-up shot of his face, um, and the music is timed just perfectly with the fade to black, which is coming in just a few seconds. I'm going to have a sip of my coffee, so just hang on. Okay, where's that shot? Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I like this shot. I'm a big fan of. What's cool is that I haven't seen I haven't seen this episode now in what feels like an eternity. Because um, keep in mind, I worked. It took me like ten hours per episode. And I haven't seen this in easily two months. I don't even remember. I mean, I, I remember the big beats, but I don't remember the little stuff. Like, this episode is going to end with a huge boss fight. Um, and I think this episode has a cliffhanger ending, but in a good way. I definitely designed this episode so that if you watched it, you were like, what happens next, you know? Which maybe I should have done with every episode, but I don't know. Choices, choices, choices. But yeah, 
yeah. At this point, every episode has crazy action sequences in it. Which, I, I think episode 6 ended with, like, a war sequence. I don't remember if it was World War One or World War Two. It's probably World War One. I think the Vietnam sequence came out the best, which I've already mentioned. So yeah, once more into the surrealist nightmare. I'm pretty certain that this episode has no musical montages, so if you're not into that, then this episode doesn't have that. If you are into that, then it's a bummer. <laughs> There's no musical montage in this sequence. Which, I try to put musical montages into every sequence, or every episode, but a lot of these, I don't know, you'll understand when you watch these episodes, like, there's just too much stuff going on and there's no room for it. And there's no reason for it, technically. Your boy fail. You didn't want to scare the poor girl away, did you? She's in there. So there's a there's a big sequence, I believe, of Sam going through the city, and it has like these floating jellyfish style creatures in it. And I filmed that sequence, I edited it into this episode, and I found that besides making the episode drag, it wasn't very plot relevant. Um, because it wasn't like there was any dialogue, any story points that were important. It was just kind of showing new monsters. But the new monsters weren't particularly scary, and, you know, you just kind of walk around popping these, like, balloons, basically, with your gun. So I cut that out of, uh, I cut that out of this episode. So it's another one of those things where things that I thought I was going to keep when I first played this game, after actually playing it a second time and editing it into a miniseries, a lot of things, as much stuff that I could get rid of, I got rid of, and I definitely got rid of like this jellyfish sequence. Um, I also got rid of this, there's like a flying whale boss fight that would have happened in episode 9 that I cut also, because it was just not plot relevant. It's also like the easiest boss in the game. The easiest boss in the game is like this flying whale um, near the very end. And he just kind of flies around and doesn't attack you. And while it's a rather beautiful looking sequence mm -hmm. and interesting, it, it's just not plot relevant. So I like to cut it. But yeah, now we're revisited by Troy Baker's excellent performance. I love this performance by Troy Baker. I thought he really nailed it. we make it a race. Whoever wins gets to usher in the yeah, Troy Baker is so talented. I think he's the most talented voice actor uh, in America by far. Other people would say Nolan North, but I feel like, nah, dude, Troy Baker. Troy Baker is old. Troy Baker, just, he's excellent. Can't say enough nice things about him. He's so creepy. <laughs> I love his charming smile. Yeah, he's great. He's such a good villain. Villains that smile always weird me out. Yeah, the rainbows in the background look beautiful. This is live gameplay. It looks beautiful. Like, what a, what a pretty game. constantly blown away by the graphics in this game. Even now that I haven't seen it in a couple months, I'm like, holy crap, this game looks really good. <laughs> Once you get not used to looking at it. So this is uh, Sam connecting to the Chiral Network. I believe this is the last city, right? I mean, that was what the plot was saying uh, in episode six, that like this is the last connection. So theoretically, We've kind of done the first part of our mission, because the first part of our mission was connect the entire world to the internet, or at least, you know, all of America to the internet. It's called the Chiral Net, but... Connect the entire Americas to the internet, and then save your sister. And so, we've got that first test done. I'm a huge fan of this sequence. I really like the way the sequence ends. The music at the end of the sequence is fantastic. Over here, Amelie. 
the network's nearly complete. Just one more knot to go. And then America will be whole again. Did I ever tell you my real name? So yeah, the sequence is implying that Amanda. she can't, uh... It's Amanda. She can't hear him. It's like a one-way hologram connection. The man who just um, that's why she's not looking directly at Sam. But you kind of know that something's wrong. Like, something is amiss with Amelie at this... I mean, something's always been amiss with Amelie <laughs> the entire series. But now something's really weird. Like... I'm on the beach, Sam. Our beach. The one where I was born. And when Sam asks her, where's your kipu, uh, your kipu, or the kipu is that gold necklace she's been wearing the entire episode, or the entire series, and that's going to come into play at the very end. I can't wait to get to episode 10, by the way. Episode 10 is like one of my favorite things I've ever seen. There's something you need to know, Sam. I've kept things from you. Worn a mask for the longest time. Everything you have said about me is true. I could end it all with... But it's not what I want to be. Yeah, so what she's telling him, what we found out plot-wise, I want to say in this episode or the last episode, which this gets covered like four or five times in the game, but in my series I only had it covered pretty much once or twice. Um, sorry, I'm just listening to the violins. Let me end it all. I'll be waiting for you on the beach. Amelie. Yeah, that gives me goosebumps. Amelie. That's really good. Um, yeah, so we learned that Amelie is an extinction entity, um, which is some sort of like demigod like force of destruction. So Amelie's not a real person, and we find that out either at the beginning of this episode or episode six. And we still don't understand quite what that means, but we know that she's not a human, she's an extinction entity, and she can end the entire world or universe. And so she's asking Sam to stop her from ending everything. Um, so right now we're getting kind of like a plot twist where in this world where nothing is what it seems, it, even more so now, you know, where now our sister is not actually really our sister. She's some sort of godlike, you know, or angelic-like creature of, you know, rebirth I don't know what you would call it because I don't like to think of her as just like this Armageddon style force of nature so yeah I had toyed with doing this sequence with no music this is the jellyfish sequence where when he gets into the city there's a bunch of jellyfish and he has to navigate through a bunch of rubble and so I'd, I'd worked on this sequence for a really long time uh, once without music and then once with music and then at the end, I just cut it all out and just did this. So I, I just I literally cut out him traveling through the city because it was just not plot relevant. I did keep this one long shot to show that the city is empty and destroyed, but I didn't show any of the jellyfish monsters uh, or him shooting them. And if there was going to be a musical montage, it would have been right there. But it just didn't really feel right with like the flow of what had happened before. And we're only like 13 and a half minutes into the episode. And, you know, I got a lot of stuff I'm trying to accomplish. I'm trying to just move it along, move it along, move it along. Okay, so I misspoke. This is the final knot, or the final connection to the chiral network. So this is technically Sam completing the first half of his mission. You'll notice that Sam has a ton of guns on his back. <laughs> you're like, you might be like, why does Sam have so many assault rifles on his back? And it's like, well, I had just gone through the jellyfish sequence, and I knew that I was about to have this crazy Godzilla-style boss fight. You know, this like massive kaiju-style boss fight that was coming up. Which I actually think came out really well. Um, compared to my very first boss fight in Episode Four which I was not happy with. My first boss fight in episode 4 was like barely 60 seconds and it was because of the HUD and all sorts of shenanigans. And I do feel like this one came out a lot nicer. Um, this is the boss fight. I don't, I don't really want to spoil it, but spoilers. This is a boss fight with like giant Amelie. And I feel like it came out much nicer. Still no HUD. Um, I had to constantly flick the HUD on and off while fighting to pick up guns. Because they were like guns buried in the tar and you couldn't see them without the HUD. 
So every so often I have to flick the HUD on, or flick the HUD on, grab a gun, turn the HUD back off, and then, you know, reset the shot. Yeah. So this is like, I think, a, this, this is a break before the fight. I guess we're probably going to go back to it. I actually don't know what the next scene is. Like, once again, I have a general idea. But it's been so long. I'm going to assume it's a beach scene. Yeah. So... Yeah, dude, that's creepy. That voice effect is creepy. So it's me. Homily. Yeah, the, the the visuals of this. I don't know why this is scary, but it is. It reminds me of. It reminds me of like Attack on Titan, or it's just creepy. And then Higgs there. It's just creepy. This is so creepy, dude. I love it. <laughs> this is great. I am the extinction entity. Wow, that's good edit. Yeah, this is not how the game does it. I'm like, wow, that, that's really clean. That's really clean. I feel really good about this. I was like, wow, I just shaved off like five minutes of stuff. A part of me is wondering if I should have kept that like ba 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 noise in the background of this sequence, but I don't know. Choices, choices, choices. I like that you can see that there's blood on his face, so you're like, okay, something's going on with these cliff sequences. You've always known something's going on with the cliff sequences, but now you're starting to gather... You're starting to, I don't know, it's starting to get tragic. These cliff sequences went from being just kind of like what's going on to now becoming very tragic. Shot reverse shot. <laughs> There's always a shot reverse shot, meaning that the HUD came up right when the elevator came to the top. It was probably like, go up and, I don't know, investigate. So, when I showed Sam walking through the city, that's why I kept that shot. Because I felt like it's not going to make sense where he's standing unless we saw it earlier. So that's why, of all the city traversal part, I literally just showed this courtyard. Because I knew there was going to be a boss fight in this courtyard a few scenes later. And so I felt like it was important to show geographically where he was. Gave me everything I needed, Sam. A complete chiral network. Spread all across America. Connecting all them. So, classic Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> Even though it's not Metal Gear Solid. Uh, classic Kojima. When you accomplish your mission objective, you realize that there's a massive twist and that you were working for the bad guys all along. And that's basically what's going on here. Higgs has tricked Amelie. Higgs hasn't really tricked Amelie, but Higgs... Anomaly are working to end the world. Fire. And they needed the chiral network to be connected in order to do that. And they, obviously they let that information out to Sam. But this is where you find out that Amelie is actually working with or for Higgs. And now you've really helped speed up the end of the world. I'm not talking about the death of a few dozen species, no. This? This is the granddaddy of them all. E.T. antimatter voiding out all life as we know it. And it wouldn't be possible without a Boy Scout like Yeah, classic Kojima. Willing to make us whole again. <laughs> what do you say? Come on! Dude, he's so charismatic. <laughs> How do you meet your end? Homilie? Sam's about to say, what the hell did they do to you? And uh, his line read is so perfect. It's one of my favorite line reads of Norman Reedus in this entire game. Which I'll shut up for that part. But Sam's about to be like, what the hell do they do to you? A great fight is nearly complete. Every night is dream. Sam, I will merge them and all mankind's beaches into a single shore. 
kind of thing. There'll come an extinction like no other. More massive than any before. The last. This is my purpose. Sorry, dear. Alright, so we're about to enter a boss fight. Surely you figured it out. Yeah, this is where we learn that, like, a lot of... Yeah, this is basically where we learn that the entire Death Stranding is related to Amelie. Like, all of this Death Stranding stuff, all of the monsters, all of it is Amelie related, which we're just now finding out at the end. Don't you get it? We can speed this up or slow it down. I like that Higgs has a slightly Egyptian looking design. You know, see like the black and gold stripes that are horizontal? It reminds me of like Egyptian sarcophaguses. Also, I like how nihilistic Higgs is. It's like nihilism versus optimism. But yeah, this is a boss fight. Unbelievably edited to not have a HUD. <laughs> I'm very pleased with how this came out. Shot reverse shot like always, because that's the only way to do this. My wife taught me that. She was like, just do a reverse shot close-up every single time that you have a boss fight, and then that'll solve the HUD problem. And she was right. So this is not easy to shoot at something that's like 600 feet away with no HUD. So I basically had to treat this like paintball. But yeah, I'm actually just watching this now. Time to reset. So yeah, when you shoot Higgs, I guess he like kind of moves to a different spot on the body, and then you have to shoot that spot. I think that's what I think that's how this boss fight works. Let the game resume. Yeah, that's a nice shot. Also a nice shot. Also a nice shot. <laughs> that's good. So yeah, I try to keep the camera as low as possible looking up, and yeah. Yeah, this boss fight came out a lot nicer than the episode 4 one, because it just, I had more to work with, um, and I just, I like the way this came out. And yeah, once again, I would have done a better job had I not had to edit around the HUD. It would have been a one-shot, honestly. Everything pretty much would have been a one-shot. Do everything like a Chiba Lubeski sequence, but you know, I definitely have to edit around this stuff. But yeah, I like this sequence. I feel like I wish the episode 4 boss fight could have come out this way, because this one is long enough to really soak it in, um, whereas, you know, the episode 4 boss fight is kind of over when, after you blink a couple times. And I do feel like, well, at least this one feels like a fight and you can kind of follow it. watching it. Does this fight keep going? No, okay, the fight's over. Yeah, that's not too bad. That goes on for a few minutes, a bunch of stuff happens. I like it. If you don't like it, YouTube someone else's Amelie boss fight and then compare it to this one and you'll be like, oh my god, you did a really good job. I'm like, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate your hypothetical thanks. This is about to get so stressful. You might be like, why? What do you mean it's about to get so stressful? Like, this is about to get so stressful. I feel like this is, like, the most stressful ending of any of the episodes, pretty much. 
Even though you might be like, well, why? He just defeated Amelie. What's the worst that could happen? It's like, oh, you'll see. We're getting there. Keep in mind, we still have three full episodes to go. Um, and the last episode is an hour long. So we, we literally have over two hours left before this is over. And that might seem crazy because you're like, wait, we just defeated we just defeated the final boss. Like, what do you mean we have two more hours? And I'm like, you'll see. Everything is about to make sense. Well, not right now, but everything by episode nine-ish at the end. Really, at the uh, nine, nine and ten is where things really start coming together. I'm late. I'm late. Which I know it's just too much to ask. It's too much to ask people to sit through like four or five hours of being confused before they get their answers. She's fine. Extinction's on hold. Let her go! Yeah, dude, it's stressful. All that for a repatriate. Pick this up when you're done dying. I'll see you on the beach for the grand finale. Yeah, think of how this episode started, and now this is how it's ending, and I'm like, oh god. Yeah, I love the I love these rules of like the repatriates and the idea of like he just keeps coming back Groundhog's Day style. Cause like what other story would allow for this, you know? What other story would allow for the villain to just kill the hero and be like, I'll see you in a I'll see you in a bit. You know, and you're just like there's nothing like it, man. There's nothing like Death Stranding. So this is all gameplay. And at this point, whenever I had to repatriate, I would do this nice kind of three sixty movement. Um well, it's not really a full 360, but notice, I didn't just, the point is I didn't make a straight line to Sam. I like, you know, did this kind of quarter circle, looked around. Try to keep the camera movement nice and smooth. And then repatriate. wants to connect the Nostria network with Anu's beach. So it's pretty clear where they went. So how do we get there? I can't. But you and Emily have strong connections. We've been to her beach. Yeah, if you can't resolve it, dissolve it. <laughs> or is it, maybe it's if you can't solve it, <laughs> dissolve it. I forget the phrase. <laughs> I always notice in movies when there's cross dissolves. <laughs> you gonna come through for me? But for this, I obviously cut the sequence down. Um, because I feel like the audience knows what's happening. We're trying to follow Amelie and Higgs back to the beach. Higgs was just like, I'll see you on the beach. And we know that Fragile can help get him to the beach. And we're just making a beeline for that. I can't send her for the point. But I'll be right behind you. I thought you said you couldn't go to her. Dude, I love the music in this. The Dreamcatcher will lead you to her. And then? Miss Honda will lead me to you. I'm sure with that, like, boom noise, it was like a new chapter, a new chapter title. I edited that out.
this uh, Sam eating these, uh, I think they're called like Kyra bites. Um, this is, this him grabbing it out of her hand is representing okay. his, uh, his connection to her at this point. Because old Sam wouldn't be able to touch her hand, old Sam wouldn't be able to eat her food, um, but new Sam okay. is comfortable with her. Worst comes to worst. Take care of Lou, right. Also, he's now saying, you know, don't bring Lou with me, and you take care of Lou. And Lou is the most important thing to Sam in this world right now, so it implies that his connection with Fragile has become uh, intense, at least for Sam. So Sam as a character is evolving and changing. Also, old Sam could never do this. Close your eyes. Now picture her in her condition. You love her, right? You love her. Here it is. Yeah, and I had to decide where this episode was going to end, and I thought it was cool to end it in this room and not follow Sam. Because I thought that would make the audience be like, oh my god, where did he just go? Like, what's going to happen? <laughs> Stay tuned for episode 8.